the Linux Foundation has come out with its latest open source jobs report. Uh, this report plays a very important role in understanding the demand for open source talent and trends among open source professionals. To deep dive into this 2020 report, today we have with us once again, Clyde C. Prasad, SVP and GM of Training and Certification at the Linux Foundation. Clyde, it's nice to have you again on the show. Hey, Swapnil, thanks for having me. As I was saying, uh, this report plays a very important role, but I want to hear your perspective because you lead this effort. What is the importance of this report, not only for the open source ecosystem, but uh, companies out of the outside of the open source ecosystem? Because today, almost everybody is leveraging open source in one capacity or the other. Yes. Uh, one of the things that we realized several years ago is that there are there's a lot of data around general employment reports and a fair few around IT and technology in general, but there was really this gap when it comes to what's happening on open source talent. And we kept hearing anecdotally that people can't hire, uh, can't find enough talent. And so what we wanted to do was put a really clear spotlight on what's going on specifically when it comes to the talent pool around open source uh, to be able to share with the market a sort of non-anecdotal state of the world, but also to be able to inform our own strategy and our own mission, which is to try to ensure not just that there's fantastic code coming out of open source projects, but also that there is enough talent to implement and use that code. What are some of the key highlights of this report? A couple of things. One is uh, the rise of DevOps skills. I think everybody knows cloud is hot. <laughs> it's been that way for a while. Uh, but, you know, the companion piece to that around DevOps and the importance of understanding CI, CD pipelines and, and also the cultural difference of working in that sort of continuous delivery. Uh, the rise of that, I think, is something that maybe most people are not quite as aware of. Uh, the second thing I would highlight is that there was a lot of questions about what's happening to tech hiring in, the, uh, in response to the COVID pandemic. Uh, we have some answers for that that says that although hiring slowed down, uh, it did not slow down nearly as much as people might have worried at the outset, and in fact is now accelerating. Uh, and the, I guess the top level thing, which is continuing to be the case, is just we, you know, we still don't have enough open source talent. So you know, the urgency of finding new ways to bring talent into the market continues to be something that should be front and center for all of us. What are the skills that are kind of not only most in demand, but also hardest to find? So that is like a chicken and egg solution, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, the obviously cloud skills, right? So uh, the, the, a lot of the, te the companies, smaller companies, uh, more conservative companies, the pandemic has pushed them to be much more active on the cloud. And what that's done is raise the stakes in terms of people who are familiar with cloud native development, cloud native architecture, Kubernetes orchestration. Uh, and then what do CICD pipelines look like in a cloud world? Because obviously there's some changes there when you're running that sort of infrastructure. Um, so those uh, those interwoven skill sets, right? And of course, sitting on underneath all of that is uh, what operating system does the, does the cloud run on? And I think we all know now that the vast, vast, you know, 98 plus percent of instances are running on Linux. And so you have this tiered approach where understanding some basic Linux competence is a baseline. Um, and then you're building on top of that with looking for Cloud native development, uh, cloud native orchestration, and um, and then what the CI CD pipelines look like to bring that to life. In addition to just coming out with this report, uh, do you have any kind of you know advice or suggestion to the hiring managers? You know what can they do to attract you know top of source developers or talent to their organizations because there is heavy demand. Everybody wants them. So uh, right. Well, you know, so some of the things actually have happened in response to the pandemic, right? So uh, one of the trends we saw last year was people wanting the flexibility to be able to work from home. <laughs> of course, now we all work from home, uh, so that helps. Uh, but it, what came out in the report that was really interesting is that more and more talent managers are realizing that you don't just have to go externally for talent, that you can, in fact, upskill people who are currently in your organization, 
So we are seeing the data suggests that a lot more people are waking up and realizing that you know, trolling LinkedIn for your next uh, hire is a zero sum game because other people are doing the same. And they're starting to invest more in training, especially online training. They're starting to invest more in certifications for their employees. And just in general, they're starting to uh, be much more proactive in looking at the existing internal talent pool and finding ways to provide new opportunities for development. And of course, that also comes with new job opportunities for the existing employee base. And I just want to talk a little more about COVID-19 as well. Uh, a couple of things are happening with COVID-19. Of course, it is also a lot of companies are scaling down. They don't, you know, they are cutting budgets and everything. Uh, at the same time, uh, since people uh, are able to work remotely, you don't have to relocate yourself or you don't have to find talent in the same area. You know, you, you have access to almost everybody wherever they are. So how has COVID-19 affected the the hiring process itself in terms of while they do have to scale down some to some extent uh the beauty is i mean i should not say that but the beauty is that uh the world that we are living in is all powered by cloud native technology without that we would not be getting food to our i mean all the services or all, all the purchases that i was making earlier even my indian grocery they are they now have a website i can just go and place it was not the case earlier so cloud is actually enable companies to stay in business so it is so that also means that you do need developer and all those talents to keep those businesses running at the same time you have advantage of not having to relocate so talk a bit about it yeah that's true i think the the uh, and, and it all does tie together right and so as people have been forced to use the cloud more. I had the same experience you did, right? My local Chinese um, restaurant suddenly developed a website and ordering capabilities that they did not previously have. Uh, so you have this broader footprint of businesses. You know, the old saw about every business is now an e-commerce business it is true, right? So there's this broader footprint. Uh, and uh, uh, on the flip side of it, you also have people who are now having to work from home uh, where they maybe didn't use to either for practical or maybe cu cultural reasons within the company. Uh, and that also then intersects with the the sort of cultural change and the cultural norms of CICD and DevOps, right? And so this idea that you have to be in person together versus this idea that you have a well-documented pipeline and everybody can contribute to that pipeline and do their commits and do their pulls. That whole tooling ecosystem of cloud native and DevOps has actually make it, made it easier, and I would argue possible to do what's happened and what we've seen over the past several months, which is people being productive, working from home, working with people they haven't worked with before, onboarding new team members and being able to get them provisioned with the right access and upskill on the right systems. Yeah, it's all really come together. There's, you know, uh, we have, uh, in my view, we have been lucky to, that we've got the te technology infrastructure that we have today because I don't know that we would have been able to stay uh, as productive and focused in a shift to you know, a sudden shift to remote work if we were trying to do this even five years ago. And I, I, I'm a good example of that because uh, I have been working from home ever since, you know, I moved out of India. And what I realized was that I work when I feel that I'm most productive instead of, hey, you know, I, ha I have clocked at 9 a.m. and I have to clock out at 5 p.m. I have to sit there and do something. It doesn't matter how I feel. And then sometimes there are a lot of personal issues also. Somebody is sick in the family, so your mind is there, but you have to come to office. But with, with you know, remote working, you just, you know, I think remote working offers the best Best, you know, balance between work and life. I mean, of course, it is actually more challenging because you may end up working all the time, but it's still it offers uh, a better uh, uh, balance. Now, earlier, we were, you're, you're talking about uh, that uh, you don't have to go out to hire people. You can also internally, you can train people. Uh, so when we look at organizations uh, and they look at all these new, you know, cloud native technologies and they want to retain or uh, prepare their own workforce. What resources are available there, especially from the Linux Foundation, because you know the training is there, certification is there, so that they can better equip their own workforce uh, when there is already a shortage of a lot of talent. Yeah, it, it's a good question, Swapnil. Uh, you know, from a practical perspective, the portfolio that we have provided, which is very heavily focused on self-paced e-learning that you take online, but 
at the same time, very skills based, right? So very lab intensive online training, because ultimately, what do you care about as a colleague or as a hiring manager? It's not whether they check the box and they have a certificate saying they completed a course. What you care about is the skills, right? Did they actually develop those skills? And so we've got a pretty big portfolio of very hands-on uh, e-learning, self-paced e-learning programs to help people develop the skills. And then we've continued to build our portfolio of performance-based certification exams. So this is not your granddad's pick and answer out of a lineup, right? These are live systems with variable questions and you have to demonstrate your skills under the pressure of time, under the pressure of being proctored by an independent person. And I think that one-two punch of really focusing on skills you know, I joke with people all the time. We get, uh, you know, we get feedback sometimes that our courses aren't uh, don't have enough video. And I say, well, true, because we're not trying to entertain you. We're trying to develop skills. And the way you develop skills is not by staring at a screen and listening to a video. The way you develop skills is by doing a lab. And so we've got a very lab centric mindset in terms of the training side of it. And that carries on into the certification side of it, where it's all about performance. Like, show that you can do the work, take the time to develop the skills, because that's what your colleagues are going to be looking for. That's what your employers are going to be looking for. And that's what's going to benefit you personally as an individual, is to be able to have that broader skill set. Um, and to be able to do that in a remote way and not have to rely on a senior trainer coming uh, onto site and working with you. I think that's going to be the new normal. So uh, now the advantage is that, you know, because of this crisis is that people are realizing that they don't have to move. They can actually they can move to the place, ideal place that they wanted to live. It could be a big ranch. It could be a beach and they can work for companies who are operating from Silicon Valley, which also means you can also cross national boundaries. You can get the, the high, whole idea of open source is the best and the brightest people from around the globe. So how do you enable these people? Because People come from different cultural background, different educational background, different languages. So uh, do you also help them irrespective of where they're coming from? So whether it's uh, internationalizing or you know, supporting different languages so people can uh, get trained? So, yes, as LF training, we do that. So we have obviously the online format helps, right, because it's truly available 24-7 globally, <laughs> nights and weekends. <laughs> Uh, so that really has expanded the footprint of what we're able to do and who we are able to reach. Uh, we've also done some translations, particularly for the certification exams, to make those available in languages that we know folks may not otherwise be comfortable with. So for Japan and for China, for instance. Uh, but we're, you know, what we're trying to do is mirror what we're seeing in the workforce. Right, The shift towards more remote work has actually opened up the pipeline. When you think about hiring and talent management, you know, if you think about somebody who is in the U.S. or in Western Europe, your pool is not as limited. Right? You really can reach out to this global pool of talent uh, in non-traditional markets. Right, And so we've seen sectors get hot. Right, Obviously, you know, India was hot for you know, a lot of work shifted there. There's a ton of stuff happening in Eastern Europe now. But it really is global, right? You know, we've got folks on our team in South America um, being super productive in this new remote way of working. And I think that's that's becoming more and more typical, right? Which is that folks are able, because of the rise of cloud native, because of the rise of this sort of collaborative DevOps mindset, are able to collaborate across regions, across countries, across time zones much more effectively than they ever have before. Awesome. Uh, Clyde, thank you so much for talking to me today about not only this report, but also how to help, you know, hiring managers not only get more talent, but also, you know, retrain their own employees. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Hey, it's always a pleasure to be with you, Swap. Thank you.